Hey everybody, good morning. This is Jean here uh, from True Love Quilts for You. I'm not necessarily a tutorial this morning. It's a it's a uh, cold and snowy day out. Everybody has off from work and off from school. I think we're going to get like seven to ten inches or something like that. It's nice. Um, I've been working on my quilt um, that that you've seen me from sort of start to now. I'm, I'm quilting it. Um, this is turning out to be a really large quilt. As you know, I just started making blocks and I just started sewing together. This is a, a fairly large quilt. It's about 95 inches by 90 inches. Um, decent size quilt, as you can see. All right. <laughs> yeah, it just keeps going. Um, it's pretty. But I just wanted to show you a lot of people who are beginners um, say, say, uh, Oh, I've made my quilt top. I've pieced my top together and I'm so thrilled. But now, what in the, how in the world do I quilt it? Um, I only have a small home domestic sewing machine. And how do I get my large quilt into this, this small machine? Well, first of all, as I was saying, if you're a beginner, 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 don't make a large quilt. You'll be discouraged, you'll get fed up, and you'll probably stop quilting. Um, I always say start small. Make, make a placemat <laughs> and then you can quilt it with straight stitches and then make a table runner. You know, start out with a coaster. What do I always say? Just start small. But then if you do have the confidence and you're, you're a confident beginner, you're working your way up to a, a, a nice size quilt, perhaps not this size, um, but a decent size quilt and you've, you're wanting to do it yourself. And the reason I say you're wanting to do it yourself, there are alternatives when you um, want to get your quilt quilted, you can do it yourself on your home sewing machine or you can send it out. And what I mean by that is um, probably the most of you know, so excuse me, but if those who don't, there's, there are people that are called long arm quilters. And what a long arm quilter is, is um, an, an individual who has invested a lot of money, like between fifteen and fifty thousand dollars for a massive, uh, usually twelve foot long table roller configuration machine, large machine set up in a workshop, um, just to quilt large quilts or has the capacity to quilt a huge king size quilt. They roll, they load it onto the rollers with the backing and the batting and they, they turn it, and the machine is this way in front of you, and either a computer guided or a ma manual guided, the individual then runs the threaded machine over your quilt top, creating a very pleasing design. Um, or a computerized design, fab uh, thread is put on, buttons are pushed, design is chosen, that's unbelievable. And boom, you walk away and your, your quilt's gone, ah, and being quilted. Um, awesome. Expensive. It's an expensive, uh, it's an expensive investment. So it's an expense to have it done. Um, and a lot of people, I mean, this quilt's cost me, uh, I don't know, $150 for the fabric already. And I, I can't afford to send my quilts out. Now, most of, most of you people have a small sewing machine. What I, what I do is after I do the basting, I pin baste, there's meth methods of basting. You can spray baste or you can actually th thread baste. Um, I pin baste my, my quilt sandwich together, um, my backing, my batting, and it's a heavy, with the pins, it's a heavy proposition. I mean, this is heavy. This is heavy on my lap. This is heavy. So the, the most important thing is if you're going to embark on quilting your quilt is to have a support system, which mostly is tables and or my ironing board. I am fortunate enough to have this configuration of tables. I have a good 40 inches behind my machine here to support my quilt as I go along. I also just lower my ironing board so the majority of my quilt is not on the floor, it is supported by my ironing board. So now what I will do, this quilt, which is big, there's a lot of ways to get it into this, what's called a throat harp, I forget. Mine is about eight and a half inches. So my, my big brother machine is about 11 and a quarter inches 
from here to the needle. This isn't quite as big. And some machines are only maybe six inches. And you're like, well, how in the world do I smash that, all this fabric? What you do is, um, what I do, is I go to the center of my quilt, the very hardest. And I find my, the center of my quilt. So that means, so that on this quilt, there's about 45 inches, 48 inches of fabric in here on this side, right? So you're only dealing with half your quilt. And why I start in the middle of my quilt is to get, get rid of it first, get, get it done first, because it's hard, it's hard. Um, this quilt, I'm not quite sure how I'm actually gonna quilt it, but I am sure that I want to, I want to secure my sashing. As you know, it's six blocks across, seven rows down with a two inch sashing. So I'm going to secure the quilt top just with a stitch in the ditch right along the stitches of my sashing, just to secure the body of my quilt. Then I'll come back and I'll figure out if I want to do a decorative stitch. I might use my quilting rulers. I'm not sure. I'll get to that when I do. But I just wanted to show you to this morning um, how I how I actually achieve working on a large quilt. A lot of people again they they roll this they roll the excess real nice and neatly. Makes sense. They roll it up into a little tube and they put it in there. And it makes it's it's a bit it's tidy. It's nice. Um, there's also what's called a suspension system. I've never, uh, I've seen it, but I, I don't, I wouldn't d do it, but it's, it's good. Like over here, the quilt is suspended by clamps. And that's what that is. It's just taking the weight off. But I find uh, off the needle because what you want, you want this part right here to be nice and loose. This is where you're quilting. And with all of this material and with all of this, you might find it's dragging on your needle and that's what you don't want. You want to be able to have it nice and loose. That's where you're quilting. If you followed me, you can find some of my free motion quilting. Um, and you can see I'm just concentrating on what's in front, but it's imperative that your quilt is supported. Um, I don't roll it necessarily. I just sort of squish it. I just sort of smush it and squish it. Keep it on my lap. Keep it on here. Make sure everything's fairly loose. Make sure I'm, I'm just I'm stitching where I need to. And I'll just start. These are just straight stitches down my sashing. Just to secure it. I take the pins out as I go along. Again, I pin based. And my pins are about every five inches or so. Um, with a long arm quilter, you're going to probably get a 99 and 9 tenths percent perfect quilt back, quilt design. It's stretched, it's taut, it's beautiful, it's flat. With this, with human imperfection, me completely, I might get a tuck, the fabric might shift a bit. I don't care. I feel fairly strongly myself, personally, um, that this is my quilt from start to finish, from, from picking out the fabrics um, and to the, the final quilt, quilting and binding. You will find that there's a, when you're in your quilting journey, that there's some aspects of quilting that you hate, whether it be the cutting or the measuring or the, um, the constructing or the basting or the quilting, um, the sandwiching or the binding. And, and I just think mine is basting. I don't love basting. Um, and, and that I can make a quilt top, the top of a quilt, I can make a quilt top in a day, two days. The quilting of the actual quilt, this might take me 25 hours to quilt. So a lot of people don't have the energy, don't have the strength, have the money, oh, more power to them, and they send their quilt tops out to be quilted. It's called quilting by checkbook. Awesome, fantastic. I prefer quilting my quilt doing it from start to finish. I mean from, you know, all the way, all the way through. So, I'm going to be finishing this up, or I'm working on this, I should say. This is a, this is a huge quilt. But I just wanted to show you that it can be done. Again, um, I'm, I'm all for starting out small. Most important thing, 
most important thing is once you start quilting perhaps a larger than normal quilt you're going to start quilting with your shoulders you're going to start quilting with your chest and all of a sudden your shoulders are going to be up around your ears and you're going to get a pain in the back of your neck and you're going to get sore and you're going to think what because we tend to be we're working with a lot you're pushing you're shoving it is a little bit physical it is so what i recommend is be very very aware of keeping your shoulders down rolling your neck rolling your head taking breaks just do just do a little bit getting up and walking just keep your shoulders down by all means literally if you if you would like a glass of wine just one <laughs> not near your quilt or if whatever it takes to relax a cup of tea i like a i like a beer i like a guinness just something that will make you just slightly relax because you're going to end up tense and you're going to walk away and you're going to go oh i don't, oh that hurt I, I didn't enjoy that i don't like quilting because it hurts me so be very aware of that this isn't a marathon if this takes me a year to quilt it takes me a year to quilt that's okay i'll do a small project I'll come back, I'll do something small. Um, the whole thing is, I want to enjoy this. And, and that's the whole thing with you. So just smush it, smooth it, support it. Oh, ass, ass, ass. Um, like, look at this thing. It's, it's, it's massive. Um, but I will get through it. I'll just soldier on through. Again, I'm very, very fortunate. I have my table back there. As you can see, I've started in the center. My sashing, I've started in the center. I just smush it and I smooth it. This is where I'm working, right in front of me. I'm working right in front of me. My, my, my machine is awesome, it goes very, very quick. This is just a straight stitch. Again, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to actually quilt this. Um, I haven't gotten that far. I'm coming to the end of it. So you can see, 80 inches is over there. So get a nice folding table. I think you can get them at Walmart or Costco or Target, you know, for 30 bucks or so if you don't have the room. And if you're if you're actually um, sewing um, against a wall or, you know, you have a, a lovely unit and, and your walls here, that could make it a little bit more difficult also because with a large quilt, all of a sudden, here's, here's my wall here and I have all of this here. I really find it very important that your quilt is supported um, on your, on your, you know, behind your machine and to the side of your machine. And then you can just smush it. Uh, again, even the largest quilt, you'll have about 50 inches. If you're doing a hundred, a hundred inch quilt, you'll have about 50 inches. Again, I've done, I've done, a, uh, I think I said, I, I've done a king size quilt on a smaller machine. It was hard. It was hard, but it was very, very rewarding. The very end of the day, I'm thinking, oh, I did that. And it wasn't, wasn't perfect because I'm not a computer. Um, I get some tucks, but if you pin base, if you, if you uh, baste well enough um, and you're, you know, you take your pins out as you go along and you get to the end here. And I've done that, you know, that's a, that's a nice straight stitch there right down the middle and oh when I'm quilting a quilt with blocks and sashing what I do is I start in the middle of one bit of sashing and when I get to the end of that row I don't go back and do I don't go back and do all the sashing top to bottom top to bottom top to bottom what I do is I do top to bottom and then as I just did now I'll turn my quilt I'll find my middle sashing middle of the quilt it's about the middle and I'll come back and I will then do side to side so I'm doing this I'm going around the quilt that so that way when you're quilting your fabric doesn't shift sometimes even when you're piecing if you're piecing like a strip quilt you're just sewing strips together you're thinking oh i'll just put one on top one next to each other go to, to the top it can it, it has a tend to shift has a tendency to shift down and sometimes you get even a curve and it doesn't it's not as nice so if you quilt from one side and then just shift it 
and quilt side to side, then shift it, then quilt top to bottom, then shift it. And it, it, makes, it makes the quilting nice and even. And again, I have no clue how I'm gonna make, do, um, how I'm gonna quilt this, but I was thinking, I was, I belong to a Facebook group. And they, um, because I, as you know, I have my rulers, my, my, my new rulers that I got. And I'm, I'm, I've said it a couple of times, I'm very intimidated by them. But this ruler is speaking to me. It's the clam shell. I don't know if you can see that. It's just a, um, a, a curved thing, a curved ruler. And I was looking at this, and I think, I think with, I was, I was reading up on it, and you have like uh, registration marks to make smaller ones, to make larger ones, and the, the spacing. Very clever, cleverly designed. Um, I think I might even do this clam shell. I was thinking across the entire, from border to border, um, top to bottom, there is a top to this quilt, the 90 inches, uh, the 90 inches wide to the 95 long, starting at the top, or starting at the bottom, and then going up with this, with this quilting roller. I'm not quite sure if I'm going to do that, and if I, if I do, um, by all means, I will try to experiment and then I'll, if I'm doing it on my quilt, I will show you how I'm doing it. It will be very repetitive because I think once I start, I have to keep going. But I think I would quite like that. It would be like an all over quilting pattern in the body of my quilt with this, it's called a clamshell motif. Um, it's gonna take me a while, I think. Because I, I, somebody said, well, you can do free motion quilting. I can, but this makes it absolutely um, perfect. Your, your spacing, your stitches, are absolutely perfect but I don't know how to do it and as I said I'm intimidated by these I'm not intimidated by a lot in, in quilting I'll see how um, they, they work if they work out they may not I might just do my free motion quilting um, but yeah that's what I'm doing oh I'm looking outside um, it's it's really snowing we're supposed to get seven to ten inches of snow um, we're very fortunate we um, have power still some uh, quite a few people in our neighborhood actually across the street had had power we had a storm on Saturday and they lost their power and up the road lost the power we didn't we were very fortunate um, uh, one of our sons uh, lost power quite a few of our sons lost power but our one son had a um, 80 foot tree fall out of his woods and take out his whole walled in patio and clip the side of his house not nice and they were out of power so we're, we're prepared if we do have, you know, do lose power. We have a nice wood stove so we can keep warm. And also we have generators. Um, when uh, several years ago, when Hurricane Sandy, 10 years ago, however long that was, um, came through, that was bad. We were out of power for seven days. That was nasty. Um, but we had, we had our stove, um, we had heat. Um, we had quite a few generators, and also we have a large RV um, that we pulled up out front um, in our driveway and hooked up that generator. So I was able to cook in the RV, and then with our generator, we had the refrigerator freezer plugged in, the television, one lamp, and my sewing machine. I said, I got my priorities right. I said, I can't, I can't not sew. I said to my husband, I should, I really should get like a treadle sewing machine. Um, I learned my step-grandmother um, when I was about six or seven. She actually taught me how to sew on a treadle sewing machine. Um, we're, we live near the Amish country, actually, about an hour away. And the Amish, a lot of the Amish um, use treadle sewing machines. So you can get parts for them, the, 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 the um, the big rubber um, rollers to keep the treadle going. So I said, I have my priorities right. First world problems, right? So anyway, we keep warm, keep safe. I'm gonna keep soldiering on through this quilt. This might take me a year to do. Um, it's pretty though. I like it. I oh, I got my I got did I did I say? Please forgive me if I did. I got my backing fabric. I remember I uh, this has taken me a while because I was waiting on my border fabric, and then my backing fabric, which is um 100 uh, 104 inches wide, backing fabric from um, connectingthreads.com. Love it. It's like a real pretty. I hope you can see a real pretty uh, tan and cream toile. It goes nice with this quilt. Um, so I was waiting for that. I, I, you know, I basted it together, and here I am working on it. 
So um, I might put it aside or I might work on it through or start another little project like I sometimes do. Um, not that I was saying I don't like to have um, unfinished projects. That, that's not my thing. But when with something this big, sometimes I need to take a bit of a break. So anyway, um, yeah, it's really coming down snow. So anyway, everybody, wherever you are, stay safe, stay warm, and um, have a good day. Thanks for watching me. Bye.